Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Decking Around Kickstarter Edition. Today we're going to be taking a look at any new decks to Kickstarter in the past 7 days. But before we jump into it, let's take a look at who funded this week. First up, congratulations to Anatomica Playing Cards. Jamie. Congratulations to The Origin 3D Genesis Playing Cards. Crushed it. Congratulations to Wonder Playing Cards, The Pyramids. Congratulations to Cocktail Recipes, Limited Edition Collector Cards. Congratulations to Mindset Playing Cards. Congratulations to Majestic Imperial Luxury Playing Cards. Congratulations to Fire and Ice Playing Cards, which will fund by the time this airs. And congratulations to Regium Playing Cards, which will have also funded by the time this airs. Then, ending in the next 7 days, we have the Dust Bunny Mafia Poker Playing Cards. We have the Double Bluff Darts Playing Cards. We have the Era of Legends, a set of 54 illustrated game cards. And, and we have a blank screen. <laughs> and we have the compass playing cards. Nice. I'm glad that found it. Yeah, no, me too. That's a dope deck. And we have the Year of the Horse, Lunar, and Zodiac playing cards. Did you get that? Hey, why would I get that? I, don't, I, I was waiting for you to say, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, man. And we have the Bicycle playing card, Las Vegas edition. I'm excited that funded. Absolutely, man. But let's take a quick word from our sponsor here before we jump into it. Join us as we celebrate the marvelous and fascinating things that surround us. All in the palm of your hands, you will be mesmerized. Follow us on Instagram at Marvelous Decks and at MarvelousDecks.com. All right, so this week we actually have two decks that we missed last week that people had requested that we take a look at. So we're going to jump into those first. So first up, we have the Hit Playing Cards, the Athletic Playing Cards deck. So this is an interesting deck because I think a lot of it is built around the idea of the uh, Hit Workout cycles more so than the playing cards themselves. I think the playing cards are almost an afterthought to the idea of it. But with that in mind, it does look like a semi-usable deck i don't really know if this would fall into any sort of collector or artistry really style you know it's an it's an interesting deck so i think with that in mind we're going to take a look through it and see what we got here um the campaign itself is actually very well put together from what i can see initially with the imagery and the moving aspects to keep your eye on it uh, talks about, you know, the motivation behind it, the fact that there was the global pandemic and obviously people weren't going out to the gym. So this is a way that you can do your workout at home to some extent. But I also think this falls a lot into the category of what we've been seeing, these semi-instructional decks like the photography deck and the ear deck and all these other decks that are probably informational playing cards is the way I would kind of describe them. I dig the style of it. It's got interesting corner elements, which actually would fan nice, but obviously not being that, you know. They'd fan for a lefty. That's about it. Yeah. The opposite side of the majority of people. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, with that in mind, though, again, that's not really the focus of it, which I think is weird. So you won't see any sort of really um, visuals around that in this campaign. I'd be curious to see who's printing them as well. But again, I don't necessarily think that many people it matters. Yeah, yeah, many people are going to be using this for an end of day playing cards. They're using it because it's an exercise related thing. Um, NPC, dude. NPC, yeah. All right. Nice. Which, how much are these? How much are these bad boys going for? Let's see what we got. Uh, Forty two dollars for the early bird. Early bird. Yeah. So honestly, how much is the standard? non-early bird so it looks like they don't even offer a non-early bird my guess would be so when you build out a campaign there's actually two ways you can put out your early birds they can be either replaced with the non-early bird when they run out or they can be both there um i always recommend people put both there because i think it helps show how much you're saving with the early bird but ultimately $42 in an early bird like even if they go 44 
for a standard, it, it's overpriced either way. I mean, go up, go up on the price pot, on the yeah, right there. So it says right there, fifty. That's with fifteen percent off. off. Yeah, yeah. So you'd be looking at that's almost a fifty dollar deck. Yeah, that's crazy. And granted, there may be a lot of information that's gone into this, but most of this information is going to be readily available on the internet. So you're really looking at just a lot of Google research time more so than anything else. Uh, this could have easily been a $15 deck, and I think there'd probably be a, a lot more interest in it at that price point. And what are we looking at here? I mean, yeah, even with a $5,000 goal, they're struggling to hit the halfway mark. At a more reasonable price point, I think it would have hit that halfway mark easily. Oh, dude, it would have crushed if they had it at a $15 yeah. with a $5, $6 shipping. You know, 20 21 bucks. Yeah, it's, it's pricey at 21 shipped, but... It's doable, and I think a lot more people would get it. You know, I think uh, hit is a big enough workout routine that you know people would be interested in grabbing it. Absolutely agree. So I think on this one, yeah. the biggest issue there is the price point. I think otherwise they really built the campaign around the audience that they were looking to target, which I think is great. But that price point, even bringing it down to twenty dollars, probably would have been a lot more appealing, especially for people in that fitness market, when ultimately they could get this information themselves. This doesn't provide information that they couldn't get other where other places. It just allows them to have a little bit more of a fun way to have that information. So price point becomes a very big uh, key factor there. But good luck. Yeah. Next up, we have the Anime Angel playing cards, which has a crazy oh. high goal if this is a single deck and seems to have already crushed it with 21 backers, which seems very suspect. So unless... unless with 20 backers? Yeah, unless each backer put in... Oh, hell no! Unless each backer put in $1,200 or more, I don't really see this being legitimate here. Uh, to me, that's a first red flag on this campaign. So let's dive in and take a look, see what we got here. Um, first, first created too. First created, 27 backed. So they've backed a good amount of things in Kickstarter in general. They don't even necessarily have to be kick, uh, cards. So it may not be within the community, but let's take a look and see. First thing I'm noticing off the bat is just not a lot of pictures here. Um, we do see bicycle grade quality cards. So we can so by assume, USB yep, CC printed by USB-CC through gamblers. Um, once in a lifetime deck only exclusive to Kickstarter. Awesome. They, I wish they would talk a little bit about the print run. That's fine. Um, Cause that would at least give us an idea of why the goal is so high. If this is a single deck, $27,000 goal is five times what you need to get this deck funded. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, all right. So it looks like we're really only seeing some of the cards here. Not even a very large spread of them. I'd like to see more of the cards, ultimately. They do have a timeline here, which isn't bad, but also they have the wrong date for the Kickstarter there of when it goes live, and the timeline doesn't actually extend beyond that. Um, pure custom tin boxes. Like, to me, this, this there's just weird things in here. So, pure linen air casino card upgrade. That's MPC, That's right? MPC. So, you already have an inconsistency there saying that this is printed with USPCC, but somehow you're going to upgrade into an MPC stock. Most people would consider that a downgrade. Um, and it also just kind of, again, another little bit of a, a warning flag there. Um, Premium custom textured tuck box with sealed base. What does that even mean? Yeah. Enhanced embossing on all boxes with fully customized seals. 80 grand. Can I, what's the price on this deck? Let us see. Uh, one deck early bird is $24. One deck standard is $33. Also, for some reason, as an early bird, you get free shipping. As a non-early bird, you don't. That's actually not a bad idea to include free shipping as an early bird benefit. But this is not a $33 deck. All things. Uh, where's all the money coming in from on this thing? Well, let's see. We have three backers at 17 pounds. We have two at one pound. We have one at seven pounds. Yeah. Ultimately, someone in here either fudged a number. This is not a funded campaign, all things considered. 21 backers at what we're seeing on these tiers for the most part. You're probably looking at... A scam. I mean, yeah, probably. There's definitely some red flags here that just seem suspect. I think ultimately, yeah, even the high tiers are not back. Yeah, to what's this all gone thing? Kickstarter special. One deck at $50. Bird. 
18 plus decks signed by the creators, $1,500 or more. Interesting. Yeah, no, you know, I, we'll we don't normally, we've, we've never done it. I, I would just be very skeptical about this campaign and stay away from it. Yeah, I mean, again, I think the other thing to me that stood out about this is if you took a look here, um, we can show the comment. Is there going to be a way to see what the not safe for work cards will look like? USPCC will not print any sort of not safe for work cards. This is another red flag to me that this is not actually proved by USPCC or that the campaign. What kind of cards? I want to know what kind of cards they are because I've seen some cards on here that are pretty risky. You know what I mean? So the fact that they won't show them. Yeah. And these are the main cards, like the Jokers and the Queens and the Kings. So like what? Yeah, there's a lot of incorrect information being presented in this campaign. To me, that's, you know, too many red flags to in good conscience back this or even recommend people take a look at it. Everyone, you can make your own decisions around this, but be forewarned that things don't necessarily line up in this campaign. So yeah, be careful. Yeah. All right. So let's see what we got new this week. First up, we have the Lunar New Year playing cards from Darren Lee. Darren. Yeah. This is Darren's fourth deck. Third, I think. Fourth created. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, did one of them not one fun of them previous? Did. One, one of them did. Uh, yeah, the was, Vermilion. Okay, that's right. Vermilion. Yeah. So, this will be Darren's third potentially created deck. We have an $8,000 goal. Uh, it looks like there's some added foil and things to it, but we'll dive a little bit more into it. So, that goal's within a reasonable that's price a good range. Price, yeah. yeah. See what we got here. I like the fact too that like a this is a perfectly timed campaign because of the subject yeah. matter, but it also goes into the idea of not just focusing on the cards, but the story behind Lunar New Year and giving a little bit of a um, background to the holiday itself. I think that's really great. It helps tie into that story there. MPC. To buy MPC on their new Linen Air Light card stock, the same stock used for their Beta One playing cards. Very cool. Interesting choice to go with MPC. You know, I think that's exciting to see because I think MPC has really made great strides recently to be an everyday deck printer, not just a prototype. Yeah, maybe printer. maybe they went with MPC uh, due to it being, you know, a Chinese deck. You know, maybe they're trying to su yeah that support it for the you know for the new year. I think that's really cool. Yeah. No, I think the deck yeah. itself. Yeah, no, I dig it. Campaign looks good. Interesting uh, personal touches on the photos of the cards. Um, not bad looking. Yeah, I mean, if it's your style and, you know, it's definitely, um, you know, something that you enjoy. It's def I'm, I'm, you know, Darren always has great prices, too. I'm sure the, the cost of the deck uh, is right on par. Here we got here. 17 shipped. Can't yeah. go wrong. That's a spot on price point. I love the fact that he also has, obviously, his Impossible Bottles as an add-on, which is awesome. I love these little tassels, which, again, tie into the thematic aspect cool. of yeah. the deck. Really has a lot of good value here. Um, custom half, half bricks, yeah, at 9,000, so that's reasonable. And the nice thing, too, is that's a really attainable goal beyond the uh, yeah. funding goal. So it's not like you have to double the funding goal to get a custom half brick box. It's a really easy push from eight to 9,000, so great job yeah. there. I I, you know what I would have liked to have seen? Maybe like the tuck box looked like one of those uh, envelopes, like design like the, the red and gold envelope, you know? Yeah, I mean, I also, you know, being unfamiliar myself, I'm not sure if the envelopes come in different styles. So it may be that. Yeah, this, yeah for sure. It, it may be that this is a style of envelope that we just haven't seen before. But the, yeah, I think it's interesting. Yeah. I like the idea of the gilding here. The gilding looks good, especially because gold is such a prevalent color within the uh, Lunar New Year Festival. It definitely goes with that deck. And then a stretch well. goal to switch up to a card of money for printing, which I think is phenomenal. It's a, it's a really good way to go about doing a deck like this, realizing that you want to get the deck printed no matter what. So you go with someone like MPC with card of money being, again, an attainable stretch goal, but keeping yeah. yourself within that reasonable range of saying, OK, if I can get to 8000, it's getting made. That's the key. But if we can get a little bit farther, we can switch it over to card of money. So good on him for that. I do, again, you know, I always say this. I think it's good to actually use the captions for the pictures just to give a little bit of a breakup between the images so it's not just a quick scroll through. You want people to really focus on this because I love those central pips on the aces. I think they're really cool. Um, Who's fulfilling it, does it say? Uh, fulfilling the decks ourselves. 
Perfect, Darren. Thank you for putting that in there. I think that's honestly such important information. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more of an expanded risks and challenges section, just all things considered to kind of address it, you know, with the worldwide situation. It's always good to be overly informative than under, but I think this is a good start for touching on the fact that they are going to be assembling, numbering, labeling, cellophaning, and packaging themselves, which means that a lot of the things that could go wrong are in their control. And he touches on that, so I think that's awesome. If this is your style- now there's two decks or one. Um, let's see. So there's the Spring Festival Edition, which is a stretch goal at 9,500. So for starters, it's yellow. just the red. And then, yeah, the yellow gold colored one is going to be the stretch goal. So we'll get only 200 of them. Yeah, so super limited right too. There. Yeah, and it's going to be gilded. Yeah. So I think that's a great deal. I think, you know, if you dig this deck, it's definitely a reasonable price point. And Darren has shown, you know, he's able to bring a campaign from ideation to completion several times now. So, good luck, Darren. Good luck. Next, we have the let's see. game <laughs> tarot decks. There are a lot of interesting, like yeah, tarot decks and everything out this week. Let's see oh. here, area fifty. Oh, here we go. I wish I wasn't royalty. Interesting. Hmm. Twenty-five hundred goal is a. Poetic and artistic collaboration resulting in a chapbook disguised as a 54 card playing deck. Interesting. So trying to bring Austin that base press company. Yeah. So trying to bring that idea of books and cards together. Very cool. Um, yeah, Steve got to support this deck local to you. Well, local Let's to see how yeah. much it is first. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do wish there was a little bit more pictures in the campaign. I think that's always a big one. Uh, or a picture. A, a, any pictures would be helpful. <laughs> Again, though, I think a lot of it with the book being the focus of this, they can't show too much if there's, you know, actual the book is the, the cards. So you don't want to give away the entirety of the book, but that makes it a very difficult campaign to run. Um, I'd like to know who's printing it as well. And ultimately, OK, this is so game over books is a, game over books is a small press, however, and cannot afford the printing cost of another run of decks while meeting our current publishing schedule. Um, Kickstarter community comes in to help print one successful run of the decks. Okay. So mentioning who specifically is going to be printing and fulfilling, I think is a key here. Seriously, as much pictures as you can include without giving away the whole book, I think would have been helpful. Even if you had actually edited out renders without the text so that people could see the cards themselves, I think that would have been very helpful because I think a lot of it for trying to dive into that playing card niche there, you want to be able to see what the cards look like. Um, let's see where we're at price point wise. 29 shipped on an early bird. 30, uh, I think that's the book. Copy of I Wish I Wasn't Royalty. Is that the book? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. So here's the other Copy thing. Copy of the deck. I think the tiers are a little confusing other than this one early bird. But so we'll go with it. 34 non early bird, 29 early bird. Very high price point. Again, using a smaller printer. That I mean, this definitely shouldn't yeah. be, you know, more than $18. Yeah, and again, I think a lot of it depends on the price 19. point or the, the print run. So, and that's something to consider too. If you're only printing 100 of these, obviously there's going to be a significant cost increase because of the low print run. But then that's something you need to consider of who's going to be actually buying these. And including that information kind of helps justify the extreme cost one way or the other. Without that information, we're just assuming that the deck is incorrectly priced or overpriced for what you know, you're know you getting there. I think there's a lot of information that could be included in this to make this a more appealing campaign as a whole, but good luck. Next up, we have the Area 51 Premium Foil Playing Cards from Third Dominion. Crushing their goal already, $7,000 goal. Really interesting tuck it's like design. An interest, yeah. Yeah. Interesting tuck. yeah, which with that goal point, you know, that that could be positive or a negative there because depending on how much this tuck itself is costing, because it's obviously very custom, that could eat into a significant chunk of that goal. Um with the idea in mind that this is a very secret deck, I hope they do show <laughs> the cards. Um I dig the tuck box, though. I think the foil and that black looks Ooh, really good. Oh, that color good. is dope. Yeah. I have a red one. So let's see what we got here. 
having some text in there would be good. Yeah. And I think even touching initially on the up top here of who's going to be printing and fulfilling, you know, somewhere in the early level would be really good because then you don't have to have people dig through half the campaign to find it. Uh, deck design, he's thrown a conspiracy theory. Area 51 consists of several levels, one of them above ground. Okay, cool. Nothing there. Yeah, giving a really interesting little story to it. Um, I feel like it's kind of like an, uh, an inspired deck by Riffle Shuffle. Dude, I, I really actually dig the way this opens and closes, though. That's really clever. Yeah, reminds me of a Transformer. Yeah, it does have, like, a Transformer vibe to it. Uh, printed by NPCC, Noir Playing Cards. Weird Tux Box. Yeah. It says Weird Tux Box Design. Yeah, I like that they're giving it a name. I think that's cool. Um, so, yeah, printed by NPCC for the Tux Box itself. I'd assume that the cards are also going to be printed by them as well, but let's see if they actually confirm that throughout here. Um... It, film and it, shipping. Film and shipping. Oh, yeah. So I, again, I think maybe just a clarification there that NPCC is going to be doing the fulfillment would be helpful. Um, also looks like it comes with a standard tuck box option as well. Also printed, yep, printed by Noir. So all the cards are going to be printed by Noir. Usually Noir does their own fulfillment or offers it as a service, obviously, for other creators. So that will likely be the route. But I, again, I think specifically stating that would be helpful. Um back of the cards interesting kind of like little add on there to add a little more I mean, that's the to first it. yeah that that's the first time we see the cards, the cards and we're right halfway there. through There's the campaign yeah so let's see what else we got here back design so i i think stretch goals should not be addressed before back design i i think yeah, you know that should be up there yeah. right you know, right after the tuck. You have to think about the order in which people are concerned about the deck. So tuck box leads to the inside, which leads to back design and face design. Whether you do back design first or face design first really depends. I think either is acceptable, though I personally think a back design can make or break a deck. So back design immediately after tuck, followed by courts and number cards, makes a lot of sense. Um, I mean, I think one of the big problems here is obviously their main focus is that tuck box. Yeah. And I think they put way too many pictures of the tough box. There's a lot of emphasis, yeah. Um, you know, I, I think the deck's fun. I think it's designed well. I think it's really cool. That back design's cool. I'm glad. Um, you know, it's a white deck with a white border rather than all black. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not going to get trashed super quickly. Um, you know, so it, it does have a lot of information. I just think the order and the amount of images on that tuck box could be definitely... Um, taken back a little bit and this is where a great example of consolidating those images into a video would have actually been dope because then you have one video that has a solid thumbnail as the front to show the tuck people can click it and get more of those images or more of the visuals should they so desire or they can scroll past it i like the fact that they used a t uh, timeline here i like the fact that they touch on the team here as well giving a little more um feel for the deck custom mark so the, you can see here the third project previous successfuls are the art of the con and big brother both really awesome decks um shows the old decks as potential add-ons great choice there how much are these bad boys let's check it out uh one classic is 19 nice uh same for the red classic and then weird edition 22. That's really not bad for a not foil custom. That's actually a lot less than I would have expected. I think that's actually a great deal. If you're into this tuck design and you're into the cards, that's a phenomenal deal. And I think ultimately yeah, 22 shipped is great. Yeah, good job there. So, and if you're looking for the classic and the weird combo, you're looking at 35, which really isn't bad at all for this kind of deck. So they crushed yeah. it. I mean, that's why their campaign's doing well. Yeah, no, without a doubt. Good job. Good job. Looking forward to seeing what else you bring to the table there, guys. Uh, I think more stretch goals would be helpful as well, just because I know you hit that one, but can't wait to see. Next up, we have the Prem Icon cards, playing cards of 90s football icons. So this is a worldwide very football, non-US, non-American football deck of cards. Um, yeah, very low goal. Already hit the goal, so congratulations on that. Um... Low goal usually means likely being printed by a smaller printing house. We can see what that's going to look like here. Um, tell us about the story. Goes right into it. Very cool. Gives that motivation behind it. So it's really tying you into it. If you're a big fan of soccer, as we would say here, or football, as they would say in the rest of the world. 
this is a deck that probably will appeal to you. Uh, 54 illustrated cards, 52. See, like, this is also a little uh, redundant there. Our deck consists of 54 illustrated cards, 52 playing cards, and two jokers. Could have consolidated that into one sentence, but ultimately not going to make or break something here. Um, the back design I th is interesting. Do you look at the images right there, too? Yeah. Right above the deck? Yeah. The, the images are, like, they kind of go bigger and larger based on the card. So I hope that the cards themselves are consistent. Yeah, consistent. <laughs> yeah, because look, they're all like. I have to say though, this is actually a really interesting way of kind of giving a visual of a lot of the cards in one shot without having just static images. It's very interactive, or at least eye catching. Um, the only problem is, is the the image doesn't stay out there long enough yeah. to really look at it. Yeah, a little too much for me. I'd rather just see the image. One way back design. So for anyone who's you know. <clears throat> Not a fan of one-way back designs. That's obviously a big one there. Uh, player print, very cool. <laughs> I, again, I think like I dig the art style. If you're into football and into this deck, like it looks cool. Let's see what the price point's at. Uh, early bird deck of cards, nineteen dollars. <laughs> Single deck, twenty-two. All things considered, I'd rather see this around like a seventeen shipped, eighteen shipped max end. Um, 22 is a little high, but again, the printer may impact that a lot, especially because it is looking like small run. I didn't see any information in here on fulfillment or printing. Um, so the one thing I would say is mention who's going to be printing, mention who's going to be fulfilling. So yeah, I've secure, secured the services of a UK based printer who specializes in some playing cards, which should minimize the risk of anything going wrong. So. Off the top of my head, I only know of two large enough printers who would, you know, specialize in playing cards. It's likely going to be Ivory for this one who specializes. I know Licorice Press is getting into it, but they don't really, I wouldn't say specialize in playing cards yet. Um, but putting that information in there is very valuable because it can actually help people decide whether or not they want to get this based on what they know the feel and the stock is going to actually turn out like. Um, let's see. Yeah. What does Fergie time mean? I am not sure. I'm assuming it's something football related. So, but also the fulfillment side of this here, it mentions, but it would be good to know who's going to be fulfilling, even if you are self fulfilling. So, yeah. Good luck, Joe. Good luck. Next up, we have the whiskey playing cards from Curious Cask. Check it out. Uh, goal. And converted goal. Okay, I was going to say, it always throws. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, goal. Interesting goal. Relatively arbitrary number at that point because you know their quote wasn't going to be one, two, three, four, five, but cool. A um, little bit high for a single deck out the gate, but not bad. What does that say? Nine, nine seven, seven or eight, seven? Yeah, 9,721, but not bad. Uh, on the higher end of acceptable is really, I think, the best way to say it. It's by no means astronomical. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I always look at it as it depends. You know, do, do they pay a designer fee of... $2,500 and then that's added into that, you know, absolutely. So it's kind of in, in the ballpark of being all right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so let's yeah. take a look at this. Uh, we are curious cask. Enjoy a deck of crisp and sophisticated playing cards that pairs with any bottle of whiskey. So great catch line ties you in immediately into the idea of the story behind and the motivation behind the deck. Um, explore and expand your palette. But one thing I will say too, um, I know initially only this yellow, on the rocks deck was available what i would say is the majority of your material your media material around it should focus on the deck that is going to be your yeah. first available because if the second image i'm seeing is of a deck that's well actually i think this one may have been available as well the yeah. gilded one right yeah it was the on the rocks and their limited gilded i think were the two initially available so yeah, yeah see fitting in the red there though like i think it's important to really focus on which decks out the gate are going to be the first available? Um, started with fun court cards. I like the fact too that they used a lot of kind of like whiskey related lingo around the idea of how they're telling the story. The court cards to me are probably the most exciting part of the deck. Um, they really do have a fun vibe to them. Products, here we go. On the Rocks, our classic deck with a gold finish. Uh really experience the range of flavors and sensations yeah i really like that thematic like they really bought into the theme of the deck which i think is very cool um uh, printed by legends 
Printed by Legends. Yeah, nice. 55 fully custom illustrated cards. Uh, diamond cut process, classic finish, pre-crushed. Pantone colors. Nice. And neat. That's a neat deck. Yeah, and well, and huh, so this was also a stretch goal as well. So yes, I, I see what you did there, Steve. Also printed by Legends. <laughs> also printed by Legends. And I believe, yeah, these two were a stretch goal. I think the one thing to point out here is that they should probably be mentioned somewhere in here that they are a stretch goal. Even if they're unlocked, it always helps to kind of say stretch goal or stretch goal unlocked. From a marketing point of view, saying that a stretch goal has been unlocked gets people realizing, ooh, there's momentum to this. Let's see what else can get unlocked. It gets people that gamified sense of stretch goals, you know? Yeah. I like that color though. Maybe yeah, the blue yeah. looks, the water looks really nice. Yeah. They did a good job with images for sure. You know what's interesting to me too is I think this back design in my mind would really benefit on a borderless deck. Yeah, no, I mean, I think either way for sure. Yeah. You know, it kind of reminds me of the Cincinnati Reds. All right, I could see that. I could see that. Barrel. So here we go. Yeah, this is the limited exclusive. Let's see. Gold brings a smooth, okay. Printed by Legends, Casino Grade. Numbered seal, so they're making five, uh, 400. 400, only releasing 395, strategic embossing, interior hot foil stamping, double hot foil stamping, matte uncoated dyed paper. Okay, cool. It almost looks gilded there too, and I can't tell. Yeah, that one's the gilded one. But the interesting thing about it, up oh, there we go, gold gilded edges. So I have to say, as much as I enjoy the stylistic presentation of this, the block text with the single divider definitely is not as intuitive to read as other formats of the text. It almost makes it easier to skip over parts in a sense, you know? It may just be me. I don't know, but that's the vibe I'm kind of getting on it. But I do dig the fact that, you know, it's a gilded deck. It looks good. 400 printed is a really... You know, a pretty decent print run, actually, for a Gilded deck. Oh. I like the Whiskey Coaster add-on. I think it fits perfectly, and I like the fact that when you flip it, it looks like a, a fan deck of cards. That's a brilliant idea. Yeah, no, it really is. Brilliant. I, I love the way they did the thematic, the theme around this. I think they really stuck to it well. I can imagine it probably took a lot of thought to build the copy out around this and really finding all the ways to tie it in, so I really respect that. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, they crushed it on this campaign. Hands down, like, really good campaign for sure. Even the brick box like is cohesive. They all look very similar. Very good branding. Nice. Yeah. Let's what's see. uh what's these decks going at? Let's see. Um it, Can you get it separate or do you have to get them in? So It looks like it may be the Unless they're singles all, gone. all sold out maybe. Yeah. Singles are all sold out. Wait, wait a minute. Two backers? Three backers yeah. on the on the rock single. Two backers. They must Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, so they really pushed for the sets here, which is an interesting take on it. Um Ultimately what I would say on that is you mm. do limit yourself a lot to someone who may be color preferential, someone who may like the yellow or the blue or the red only. It definitely helps yeah. keep within that limited area where if you're really trying to push on sets and you know you want to sell 500 sets then you need 500 of each deck and so then you have to kind of allocate that initially but i do think you do limit your reach to some extent when you don't allow for single deck purchases um let's see if there's any add-ons build by gamblers awesome I actually like that you put a lot of thought into the risks and challenges section there. It's a lot more robust than most we see, so good job on that. But yeah, I'm not seeing the ability to buy a single deck, which, no. yeah, it looks like, Weird. yeah, you're stuck at the, the tasters, so it's three or yeah, nothing. Tasters. And at that yeah. price point, it's $60, unless you're in- well, 20 bucks a deck, that's not bad. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. But well, now the standard decks, do they have gold foiling or on them or anything? Uh, not that I saw. Now they look relatively plain. They have a seal on them. And yeah, otherwise, so, I mean, yeah. that's, 
So yeah, well, so 53 a US shipped for three. So $17, $18 each. Oh. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, yeah, it would be interesting to see metric wise how people like, because I feel like this blue would sell like crazy. And the problem, and I yeah. and I can see where they would go with the taster set then because you don't want to be stuck with a whole bunch of the colors that people didn't like as much because then you're stuck with them. If you, if you right. get people to buy a taster where they get all three, you're moving more. And it's, it really is a good idea. I'd be curious. I mean, you could do kind of like what, uh, what, uh, you know, luxury knock did. And basically if you're doing singles, you know, after like you could do a certain amount, then you could just have, you choose a single and what you get is what you get. Yeah. Yeah, so you that get one of the three. The ones that yeah. are not selling as well. Yeah, so maybe that's maybe that's an idea to throw in there. You know, a, a I don't want to say a mystery single, but a tier that yeah, just says one sure. deck of cards, you'll get one randomly chosen red, blue, or yellow, depending on what's left of the stock after tasters. Which is yeah, isn't yeah. a bad idea, and it's actually a really helpful way to get people to buy more singles if they wouldn't <laughs> want to back for three. So something to consider. Right. But nicely done, good job, guys. Good luck. Yeah. Rushed it. Next up, we have the Deadly Pirates. Luxury playing cards. Arr. See what we got here. I wasn't expecting that. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Luxury casino quality collector playing cards featuring epic pirates. Right. Dive into it here. Let's see. Deadly pirates. Deadly pilot pirates first created third back or three back. Deadly pilots. Yes, deadly pilots. <laughs> deadly pirates. <laughs> deadly Pilates. It kind of looking at it kind of just makes me think of a samurai deck. It does have a little bit of a samurai vibe, but I'm, I'm holding reservation until we get a closer look because I can't tell great yeah, from that. Sure. Uh, what do yeah. we have here? Only a thousand decks printed, embossing gold foil WJPC, and gilded cards. WJPC, Gambler's Warehouse. That's good. Yeah. Printed by, yeah, WJPC, fulfilled by Gambler's right up top. Perfect information there. Um, I would be curious to see a little more detail around the idea of embossing gold foils and gilded cards. Is that on everything or only some? But we can dive into the details as we go. Uh, backers who pledge it for looks wooden, like it's all of it. Uh, backers who pledge for wooden helm add-on. See price and add-on section. We'll receive a secret code and instructions to unlock the helm. Interesting. So something really different. I actually really dig that. Uh, the fact that it holds two decks in there. Like this is if you're really into nautical themes, this is dope. What is that? Oh, that's it's a the ship box wheel. Or yeah, something? it's a it's a limited edition box. It's clever. Interesting. So, okay, Huge. so now that we're close up more here, I can see that this is a pirate hat. Um, and these are anchors. So I, I get yeah. the pirate vibe. At first, from farther away, though, it was tough to tell. I really like the, the artwork on the pips. I like the full-size aces. Uh, central pips on the aces looks really good. Goes in the history of the cards there, really nice. I do think the one thing I will say off the bat is I probably would have put this wooden helm a little bit lower because you're breaking up the continuity of telling the story of the deck with something that most people are not going to get and it's limited. So I'd say this would actually be better in a lower section as an add on ultimately so that people do focus on the decks. But I still think it's a cool item. Um, yeah, I like the artwork. I like the style of pirates are your thing. I think a lot of people like pirates. This is definitely a cool deck. Like breaking down, you know, each court card, which is very nicely done. Takes up a lot of space. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there probably was a little bit of a better way to consolidate this, but I think looking at it from a mobile point of view too, this probably works really well on mobile. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. Gold foil tuck box. Very cool. Um... Yeah, see, you mentioned this down here as well. I think it would have been it would have made a lot more sense to bring that top section down right around here. Um, interesting collector box, flat kind of six half brick, interesting style, uncut sheets, wall poster. That's actually a really cool wall poster too. Um, all right, Let's see what we got here. Price point was single deck, twenty two dollars. I mean, it's gold foil, it's gilded. I mean, that's a good price. So, yeah, and that's the other thing. I, on. So, you know, I think that's really not bad at all. The one thing I would want to say, though, is on the gilded side of it. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, it looks good. It looks, gosh, that's really pretty inexpensive considering. So, and W. Yeah, I mean, 22 bucks for a gilded deck, yeah. you know. How is the gilding? That I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's that's up to uh, but, the end user to you determine. Know, uh, WJPC is not known for their gilding. Yeah. You know, but uh, I'd be. In I'd be curious to find out how it is. Yeah. 
And honestly, so if you do back it, let us know below how the gilding is. Yeah. And every time I've handled the WJPC deck, I've actually really enjoyed it. So. Yeah. No. I mean, their their new uh, stock is definitely good. Yeah. You know, uh, Kakondo deck actually printed with WJPC, and it feels great. Okay, Fifty one dollars for three gilded decks. Like that's not bad. Yeah. I mean that. Some campaigns cost one. Yeah. That's the cost of one deck. Uh, that's gilded. Uh, so. Oof. Or if it's a hit deck, that's the price of ungilded. The interesting thing about this, though, four days to go. The campaign length seems to have been very short because this is something that we didn't see, we last, didn't week. see last week. So I'm assuming that their campaign... When did this launch? Let's take a look here. Dates. Launched on February 8th. Okay, so this would have launched... Six days yeah. ago. So you're looking at a 10-day campaign. I would say that that's probably an oversight. Um, 10 days is very, very short. 30 days is really what you want to shoot for. It makes the most sense. Um, 10 days is tough, especially because I haven't seen a huge push for this on social media. I haven't really seen a huge push for this in most places. I think from that point of view, if you're shooting really for a 10 day campaign, which is ridiculously short, you want to push hard in the lead up to this. Um, good luck. I hope that if this doesn't fund in the next four days, you continue, you know, pursuing it because it's a dope looking deck. I think people really would enjoy it. It's just you need to make sure people are aware of it. So. Good luck, man. Good luck. Steve, that is the end of the decks this week. Let's take a quick word from our sponsor here. And when we get back, let's let everybody know what we would back. Join us as we celebrate the marvelous and fascinating things that surround us. All in the palm of your hands, you will be mesmerized. Follow us on Instagram at Marvelous Decks and at MarvelousDecks.com. So Steve, what would you back this week, man? Nothing. All right. Nothing at all. I'm keeping my money, dude. Short and sweet. I'll be honest, I dig the tuck on that Area 51 deck. I, d I really enjoy the look of it. I like the ingenuity of it. I'd say that would probably be my go-to for this week. Um, yeah, but otherwise, I think it's a week we can keep our budget down. Yeah, that's good because last week's budget was uh, Through the roof. very, very thin with the, with the campaigns that closed last week. Yeah. Well, with that in mind, everyone, thanks so much for checking out the video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. We drop these every Monday, so tune in next week for another episode of Neckin' Around Kickstarter Edition. Peace, y'all.